Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. Today, I want to talk a little bit about sound, and that's because I'm trying to debug an audio issue I've been having with my setup here. In fact, this audio issue might be present right now because I'm, I say, still debugging it. Um, but uh, it's really about microphones and how they tend to uh, pick up noise and. You'll have something like this. I mean, I got this at car boot sale for 50 pence. Um, it's a sort of traditional type thing you'll see on YouTube type videos. And in fact, I might even set this one up one day and we'll try using it. But basically, you have a condensing microphone in there, which is basically like a microphone with a transistor. And a sound hits that. The transistor's flipping away and it's amplifying the sound slightly. And it puts the sound down the wire to your device. Um, and the problem lies often, I mean, you get the quality of the microphone and this assembly here, you know, the uh, basic foams and things like that to avoid pops and popping sounds and pl plosives, plosives. Um, but in uh, an electrical environment like this, where you've got a lot of uh, equipment, you get in, um, interference coming down the wire and that manifests itself as a noise. So I'm going to be quiet for a moment. And if you're listening on headphones, you might hear this here. It's plaguing me and it's a very high pitched whine. Don't know if you heard that or not, but I'm going to move move the, the, the microphone around to see if you can hear anything else. Be very gentle, don't worry. Right. That's my test, but I haven't got headphones plugged in on my end to monitor, so I can't tell if that's good or bad or what we're hearing. So I'm going to set up some apparatus because I know when I listen to the headphones on my uh, GH3 or GH4, it's got really quite good amplifiers and I can hear way more than it will record normally. I don't normally have the recording set up that high. So what I've got here is a Tascam DR70D. It's basically a combination of four channel mixer and a recorder. It does the has the XLR and uh, phono inputs inside there. It also has conveniently two built in microphones, so the stereo and another input on the side. You can input from an external source. You've got headphones out, monitoring out, and you can actually have, for example, back from your camera and back into your camera. So you can record back onto the line ins if you've got a relatively half decent camera like these. You can actually just fit this to your rig and uh, get your whole second source recording. Has a bunch of uh, options and filters and things like that. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be powering up from my external USB battery. So uh, I was just thinking this in itself is going to cause <laughs> noise because you've got the uh, inverter here. Um, yeah, let me get some batteries before we continue. I've sorted out the batteries, I've sorted out the monitor output from the camera and I've got some headphones here. So I'm gonna start setting up. Ooh, talking with the old headphones on, that's a bit weird. You get to hear, of course, a different sound. So we're gonna plug the camera into the external input in. We're gonna plug my headphones into the headphone out and we'll adjust the volume as needed. We're gonna turn on the recorder. And the reason I'm using the recorder as well is that if there's something interesting, you'll be able to hear it with me, won't you? We can listen together. I'll turn the light off because I think the light actually affects... Oh, hello. The light actually affects the sound and now I can hear myself very loudly. Not in stereo. Okay, we go. We're going to turn down the external channels. We don't need those at all. So now you can see on the screen me uh, talking. I'm going to hit record. Ah, so that sound you're hearing, that's actually coming from the screen of the camera. That's being picked up by the actual wire here, and then we'll just Turn on the lights. You can imagine it's very tedious to try to record all of that. 
because every time you set up your camera basically you're going to pick up that noise and what happens is you've got a sound that just will jump onto this and it's mains hum so the a lot of the hum you heard from the lights for example is that mains hum and you see it's getting picked up as a, a signal along this wire um, which then just ends up going into the amplifiers on your device and that's what you are hearing here if this is your mains hum sinus there I'm guessing it'll be coming on both wires um, and pro realistically, uh, it will be coming on both wires, but one will be maybe a out slightly different amplitude, because otherwise you probably wouldn't hear it if they were in phase. Now, when you uh, hear it next to the screen, um, it's a different, it's a higher frequency. Um, that's probably because there you've got something like that going on, uh, and that's because it'll be using an inverter like this, which is a DC to DC circuit, and it's cheating. Uh, using an oscillator to increase the frequency and doing some magic to convert that into a different voltage. So that's kind of the problem I face today. You take your uh, wire like that and you've got your microphone there and it's wrapped around, I think it's, I think it's individually, I'll have to double check that, I'm pretty sure it's individually, with a metal tube effectively, it's another wire but it's a metal braided wire and that is bound to some sort of like reference we're going to say that's you know and it, it, it's probably bound to the negative you got a, i say a negative a ground wire actually and you say that's all ground and then i think it's pretty much supposed to work like a faraday's cage but clearly in this case it isn't um and it's going to unplug this gently gently a lot of sort of traditional wires you get for headphones and things look like this and if you actually open them up some of them do have that so then wouldn't be surprised if that didn't in fact i do have a bit of wire knocking around from another project that's a nice connector on it but we're not going to use that connector anyway why don't we uh, just have a quick discombobulation see what this one does chop that off we're going in Urgh! so my idea really is i i thought today i was just going to be making a uh, tenacious isn't it making another um, headphones but I don't think that makes sense so I was really just going to take one of these this headphone for example and pull out the gubbins and wire it in but it's not the problem I really thought my headphones were at fault I say my headphones my microphone was at fault um, but it's not it's clearly not the microphone it's bloody picking it up on the cable and the cable is something I thought I really sussed on that um, and for a long time if you listen to all the videos it was very good um, and then uh, you know recently it's been very bad and I've had to sort of use a lot of after uh, post-processing filters and things to try to stop that happening uh, and I don't want to do that anymore I think it might actually have lined up with the time there's a magnet on my microphone and it was stuck to a particular place so maybe where it was stuck before was all just right you know the, the lay of its wires everything it just happened to not be picking up anything and now that's changed everything's ruined so have a look see there you go i mean that's pretty much what we thought it would be um i kind of uh, I, I kind of thought it was going to be on individual wires but i guess it depends on the the way it's all wound up um but you can see there it's just a tin foil type thing that's just got wrapped around these three cores in this case so the reason this one's probably got three well the reason it definitely has three wires is that you've got a common ground wire which i kind of feel might be the tip i'd have to check that um and then your left and right channels so with this information though armed with this information how am i today going to solve solve my little problem is i'm going to take this tonor bm 700 and it's got this kind of a annoying to be actually honest with you uh, XLR type connection which is a pretty unwieldy uh, connection and I've got plenty of regular microphones I don't need this one and if I looked inside in there before it does actually have a PCB with a bunch of gubbins uh, which does look to me like it's doing a bit of filtering although there is a little a couple of transistors potentially in there um, let's have a look uh, which I'll probably be yanking out so it doesn't really matter let's just open that up should we just get should we just go into it let's just get straight in we'll just get straight into it um, and my idea really was just to re be to replace the whatever's in there with the microphone capsules that I use in my designs and to just turn this into one of my notes it's just a couple of um, capacitors it's just doing a bit of filtering really I think um, 
because you've got to remember uh, DC, um, you don't uh, allow DC through these circuits, and I don't think they pretty much get through uh, most of the time. Um, and that's why you just have these sorts of filters here, because you've got to remember uh, a DC signal won't be able to jump through a, a capacitor, so it's it's filtering out the DC component. So we'll just yoink that out. Yoinks in a way. Although I do kind of like maybe that we could uh, reuse some of this PCB action, but I don't think we're going to. I think we're just going to bin it all. I don't need it. <laughs> Look at that thing. Tonor. So I don't know if uh, these are a quality microphone. I suspect this is very much uh, similar to the kind of crap you buy basically on the on the interwebs. And I'm sure if I'll go on and see people with YouTube videos, they'll always be telling uh, telling everybody how they're using the latest you know X Y Z uh, microphone, and you're like, yeah, whatever. So it's same crap, different box. And there you go, that's what's inside this doodad. It's really just a capsule uh, inside an enclosure. So all I've got to do is, I could, I might even just re reuse that one actually. And if you're ever thinking about reusing these things, have a look closely. Now if your camera like mine, and a lot of equipment is, it does actually have a, a bias power. There is, it does put power down the microphone wire to power these, power these capsules, because they do have gubbins in them. And if you look closely, there will be a positive and negative side. Um, and if you really look closely, there might be a symbol because what you're seeing there is be the back of a small PCB. And I'm going to have to go for a guess that the black wire is ground. Although it's not explicitly marked on this one, you can see it is connected to the housing. Yes, yeah, so it's connected to the enclosure. So I'm going to do a very quick soldering job now off camera because I want to uh, disconnect this microphone. And we'll uh, just have a quick listen and just see what it sounds like. Right, and I'm back now. I hope you can hear me. We're talking through the microphone and in my hair, in my hair, in my hair. And you can see I've wired this up in a very simple way. I've connected the left and right channels to the yellow wire and the black wire to the black wire on the assumption that it's probably correct. And I'm hearing a lot of noise as you might be at home if I uh, mess with my after processing filters. So um, I'm going to move this wire around a bit. Buzzing. Less buzzing. Buzzing. Less buzzing. So that's that horrible hum. And I can hear, I can hear my soldering iron um, transformers buzzing. I can hear the lights buzzing. I can hear so many things trying to jump in on our signal. Now you'll notice here though that we've got no uh, connection set up between this doodad and the other thing so let's have a go just check that that's because look they're not connected at all so I'm going to connect that at the microphone end oh every sound in my ears is amplified oh there we go There we go, that seems to have helped a lot. That was basically grounding the chassis of this. So this thing was obviously acting as an antenna and somehow affecting the microphone in there. So listen. What? It's maddening. It didn't make any difference. There is no pain you are receding. A distant ship smoke on the horizon. Right, okay, that's good. Yeah, I've got the microphone in my hand because I've wired it up and it sounds to my ear very much like a microphone where you want to be quite close to. I'm going to be a little bit gentle because it's all hooked up. I don't want to introduce too much annoying noise. But that's the microphone now there you know settled settled and ready and I can see this cable it's quite a long cable and it's actually touching remember the lights before that were buzzing like an MF it's actually touching those it's not making any sound I'm gonna move the wire again very gently up to the screen of the camera nothing nothing and now I'm gonna again move the microphone itself where the electric gubbins is to the light 
Nothing, nothing. And then I'm going to do it up to the screen. Absolutely nothing at all. I owe you nothing. No. I've made this microphone work. And it says professional microphone. So I think I've professionalized it up a little bit more. The only downside with it is, is it is massive and the chance of hitting it are really high in the back office. So if I am going to use it as my permanent microphone here, I'm going to have to find a way of mounting it. However, I won't be worried about mounting it because I know it's not likely to pick up any electrical interference. Although I've turned it and you can hear the tonal quality of my voice has changed. I'm going to point it round towards me and that sounds like that. And then if I sound it, oh, it really wants to be perpendicular so your mouth is speaking straight at it and if you recall that's the direction that the capsule is and what you know, obviously front or back you'll get a slight difference but talking dead on the top the way i had it nothing so yeah i'm gonna have to probably mount it upside down like that as you've seen though when you see people doing radio stuff i hope that's some use to you it's certainly been very useful to me and hopefully we'll hear the results of this maybe in this video and future videos once I mount it all up. So as ever, thank you for watching.